Of course, I'm out at one of my favorite spots, Steiger 14, Pier 14. And the weather is great, sunny. Um, I've said, and I think, I hope I don't keep saying this, but I often go out there to write. I, I write longhand, and uh, at least when I'm beginning uh, on a story or something, the first bit is always written with hand. So I'm out there and I'm sitting and it's because it's a warm day and because it's a Sunday, you have quite a few people and there's a bit of a breeze. And then suddenly these um, napkins, these snack bar napkins, just about four or five of them just float by and disappear into the water. They go off the pier and I look this way and I see the source because there's a logo on the napkins and I see somebody or a group of people and one of them has a bag with the same logo and they had uh, bought some snacks from a snack bar at Central Station. And I think what, I wouldn't say it surprised me because it's not new, but they, they just couldn't be bothered. They, they just, yeah, whatever, you know, those things, who cares? And it's a thing that, it's funny, as I get older, I notice this more, but the driver behind it is stuff I was told growing up. So what's what's making me think, ooh, why don't you this or why don't you that, has a lot to do with just growing up in a world where if you dropped something, you were meant to pick it up. I don't know how that was just drummed into our heads, whether it's in school, whether it's in public, uh, at home. You The assumption is if you made a mess, you, sh you should clear it up. However, uh, there is this thing about the modern world or certain parts of the modern world where the idea of doing anything menial is seen as uh, is just bad, it's inferior, it makes you... I, I don't really know what it does from the outside. It looks as if for people who really don't ever want to use their hands, it's as if using my hands makes me less of a human being or less, I don't know, it reduces my status in some form. And um, I don't know, I think of this, you see it quite often. Sometimes <laughs> I've seen people walking. I saw a guy walking and he just, he just had, I don't know, he had, I think he had a cigarette package and on the outside of the cigarette box is cellophane or something. So he took that off, just threw it. He didn't even throw it, he just let it go. So it wasn't as if he's actually throwing it. It seemed to be some subconscious deal. Um, I remember a few months ago in Rotterdam, I just finished teaching and I was going to get the tram. No, 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 I was going to the supermarket to get something. And as I was walking towards the supermarket, I saw two young ladies coming and they'd had, they had, uh, I don't know, something in paper. And they just chucked the paper on the floor. So I said to one, I said, hey, uh, aren't you going to pick it up? And I got this look of like, dude, leave me alone. And I thought, should I? you sort of get stuck because it's not nice. I'm trying, I, I don't want to be bossy, but I just think it's a bit silly that if everybody dumps stuff and expects other people to pick it up, you will get a mess. So of course I picked that up, but you know, that's how that is. And I see it again and again and again and again. And there seems to be nothing that anybody can do about it because if you tell somebody, could you please pick that up? They get into such a rage. I don't know why that's the case. It shouldn't be the case. I mean, you've made a mistake. We all make mistakes. And you should be able to accept correction without feeling as if your whole identity has been crushed. Um, this sort of, this idea of rubbish and not wanting to touch it brings me back to a long way back, uh, 2010, that in Amsterdam you had a strike uh, the rubbish people went on strike. They wanted a better deal. And so you just had pile, rubbish just piling up and piling up and piling up. And this was before Amsterdam had become the tourist um, haven that it now is. Um, and so you did have tourists, but you the main thing was this rubbish everywhere, huge piles of rubbish. And... They were just there, and I do remember somebody on the local television, 85, said, asked, asked people on the street, oh, are you going to help with the rubbish? Are you going to this? Are you going to that? And the general response was, no way am I going to help clean up this rubbish. Even though it's my city, and I'm very proud to say I come from this city, there is no way on earth I'm, I'm going to do anything 
with this rubbish. And of course they didn't until um, it was, then you had Queen's Day and I think Honestly, I can't remember if it was the 30th of May, but whatever, or April or something like that. Um, but as it approached uh, Queen's Day, they realized they needed to do something about this rubbish. So you follow these mountains of rubbish everywhere. And then on the Saturday, on a Saturday, let's say, I heard on the radio that the um, rubbish collectors, the ref refuse collectors, rubbish refuse, rubbish collectors, sorry, had made a deal with the municipality or whoever and they were happy with that deal and therefore from Sunday they would clean away the rubbish. Well, it seems as if every human being with a camera who understood that there were certain moments in the history of a city or a place that would not be repeated or the chances of them being repeated were very small, heard this. And so when I, I too, of course, I go out Sunday morning at, uh, I don't know, 5.30ish or so, very early, and I go out and I see a number of things. I see big piles of rubbish which had been there. I saw a lot of these birds that I never know if they're stork or herons, but the ones that you see a lot of, they're attacking the bags like crazy. And the third category of thing I saw were zillions of photographers. Just everywhere you looked, you saw people with their cameras clicking, 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 because they knew they'd probably waited. Yeah, I'm going to take pictures. It is unusual to see all this rubbish in Amsterdam. So I will take pictures at some point, but not today. And then suddenly they know that this is the last chance they have of doing this. So photographers everywhere and of course uh, at the same time you had people cleaning so you've got the, they're taking pictures people are cleaning this huge teams of people in this fluorescent orange and with lots of hoses are cleaning away and I remember I was taking pictures and I noticed there was this guy so I'm taking pictures I don't use a tele lens I, I do need to get pretty close but I noticed this guy who seemed to be tracking me so everywhere I went he, he was there, and it really started to work up my nerves um, to the point where I, it was almost as if, um, how can you say, like those spy movies where you're being, uh, what do they call it? Is it shadowed or trailed or followed or whatever? And so I'm zipping around, and I, I don't know what he was, whether he was taking pictures of me or whether he was seeing that, oh, that's an interesting picture to take, so I'll take a picture of that. I have no idea. I didn't go up to him and, and say, leave me alone. Um, anyway, that was that sort of rubbish adventure and this memory of course comes uh, to mind or it, it was thrown into the mind, into the for forefront of my mind because of what happened the other day where these guys accidentally let uh, these napkin, the wind blow these napkins when they just couldn't be bothered to look at things. So I am saying here as an old fuddy-duddy, please clean up your rubbish. We love our city. Um, uh, Keep it clean. That's all you need to do.